All right. What's going on, everybody? Calling calling live from outer space. Uh, you know, it's been an amazing morning. Um, I'm feeling lifted this morning. I got my coffee. Uh, if you got your coffee, drop a 777 in the chat box. Hopefully, y'all came with your coffee because uh, it's coffee and crypto. And, you know, if you want to turn your camera on, you know, if you're in, if you're in the space, you could ch turn your camera on. Feel free. And if not, no problem at all. But definitely grateful to have each and every single one of y'all here. Uh, this is the very first time uh, that I'm actually uh, doing this call. And so this is, uh, you know, this is what it is about mastermind, right? And the reason why I do this is because number one, I do this already. You know what I mean? Like this is this is my life. So I'm just in, I'm just introducing and I'm just inviting y'all into my life. Like if you've been wanting to learn how to invest in the cryptocurrency, if you've been wanting to learn how to really research, not just invest and really just what, what is the day in the life like, right? I feel like it's like my vlog, you know what I mean? So it, I'm not really tripping on how many people show up. I know that the people that's here, um, y'all wanna dig deep. We're about to go into the rabbit hole. I do this every morning. Um, you know, uh, it's usually not coffee. Uh, I want it to just be uh, relatable to everybody, but it's usually a joint. You know, I, I, I'll get me a joint, uh, some water, and, uh, and, and, I will get, and I will get the work. And, I have a successful day. So, you know, that's, that's my, that's my day to day. That's how I get down. Um, you know, but if you, if you drink coffee or tea or whatever, you, whatever you need, you know, cheers to you. And um, we're about to get into this right now. So um, how many of y'all are brand new to cryptocurrency? Uh, you know, if, if you're brand new, you could drop a me in the chat box. Like, and when I say brand new, maybe six months or less, uh, you've been uh, really focused and investing into this. Oh, hey, Mr. Don, how you doing? Got Sir Don on the line. That's that's amazing. Uh, what's up, Jake? Uh, what's going on, man? Well, welcome. Um, and uh, yeah, so this call, again, uh, this call, it's not really specific as to exactly what I'm going to do each day. Uh, some days I might get on here and just watch some YouTube videos with y'all and, and just show y'all kind of how it is to go into the rabbit hole. You know, you'll get different people that I study so that you can learn how to go and study just like me. You know, um, I've been able to gain a lot of success from this. And um, when I talk about success, I'm not talking about the dollar amount. That's inevitable. Um, I'm talking about I'm talking about the 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 amount of information uh, that I have. Like, you know, is once you dive in this rabbit hole, it's hard to sleep. You know, I wake up at four or five a.m. I bought crypto in my sleep. Like it's 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 not it's it ain't you know it could not be healthy. It could be healthy. You know, so again, I'm telling y'all just this is the real deal, right? Um, it's a very exciting space. Um, you see money run up, you see money run down, you, you see money go sideways. Uh, you know, might not be something you're used to because maybe you have a, a traditional bank account and uh, maybe the percent payout per year or per day or whatever it is, is, is not, you know, that percent is not that, that high, right? So um, I want to show you guys how to really dive in. So I got a video this morning. Um, I'm going to start off just like this. <clears throat> We're going to play this video right here. And um, this is Kevin O'Leary now. Um, it's a 13 minute video. And after this, after, after this video, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to dive into some documents. I'm going to show y'all what I was what I was researching yesterday. Um, the whole purpose of this is to really, if you're a little iffy on crypto and you haven't went all in, uh, this session is going to be great for you because uh, when when I'm done with you, you're going to look like a deer in headlights. <clears throat> you know, you're going you, you're going to look like a deer looking directly in some lights. Eyes going to be wide open. Uh, you, you know, but I promise you, it's gonna be it's gonna be worth every moment. So uh, this interview right here is uh, Yahoo Finance. Uh, they interviewed uh, Kevin O'Leary, who is the uh, billionaire from Shark Tank. Um, you got to understand that this is uh, this is the next thing. Um, what he said was, uh, and, and 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 I don't want you to miss this, but he said that cryptocurrency uh, is is will be the 12th sector of the S&P 500. So this is the entire interview. All right, I'm about to play it for you guys, 13 minutes, and we're going to dive deep into these different uh, documents that I found. In the next 10 years, the crypto blockchain, Bitcoin, all of this innovation will be the 12th sector of the S&P. That was a portion of the Bitcoin 2022 keynote from venture capitalist and Shark Tank investor, Kevin O'Leary. And O'Leary went on to say that we need 
policy. What we need is policy. We need the government to catch up with us. The venture capitalist, popularly known as Mr. Wonderful, joins us now. Kevin, thanks so much for taking the time here with us today. We do know that mass adoption of tech innovation has had this history of outpacing government regulation. So how confident are you that sensible government regulation will happen in blockchain and cryptocurrency before true mass adoption and the next inflection point happens? I'm very confident because the pace and acceleration of policy proposals coming out of bipartisan Senate committees and the Hill um, has never been greater. We've got the Loomis bill, we have the Haggerty bill for stablecoin, the Toomey bill for stablecoin, we have the POTUS executive order all within six weeks of each other, all discussing the future of cryptocurrencies. And you're right, we, we need to catch up with the rest of the world here because regulators in other jurisdictions like Canada the first to allow a Bitcoin ETF and Ethereum ETF, the first crypto exchange dealer broker was licensed there across the country, Switzerland, England, the United Arab Emirates, they're at far advanced. And I think our government understands now that we've got to catch up quickly. And you saw a major move just yesterday in the announcement of BlackRock and Fidelity putting 400 million into USDC the Circle product, that's unprecedented for such state financial services companies to make a bet that large on cryptocurrency. Kevin, Dave Briggs here, got to get your take on Elon uh, today. The offer, 54.20 per share to take over Twitter. And your friend Mark Cuban says he thinks that Elon is just effing with the SEC. What do you think he's doing? What should the board do? And if you're to have a beer with Elon Musk or a joint, I guess, in the case with Elon. What do you want to ask him about all this? I don't think this is a crazy move he's making. I'll tell you why. Elon Musk and Tesla is the only automotive company in the world that doesn't have to spend a dime on marketing. And a lot of that came from his use of Twitter over the years as a vehicle, as a megaphone to talk about the innovations of his products and services, whether it be in space or electric cars or whatever, whatever what have you. And he took advantage of that. Now he starts to see the platform go awry. And if you're an investor in this thing, as I have been, this is a miserable, miserable stock. I mean, it's been, it's delivered no value to shareholders for a very long time. Now maybe you blame the platform or maybe you blame the management or maybe it's a combination of both, but it doesn't matter. It's been misery. If someone offered me 50 plus dollars a share for this, that's a done deal right now. Because I don't know how you monetize this thing. It's been really clipped. Even in the heyday when Trump was using it as a promotional vehicle for his campaign, it wasn't Twitter that delivered the eyeballs. It was other media taking the tweet and then broadcasting it. So from that respect, it's really not used by that many people in the United States. It's a very small subsegment, not a great advertising vehicle. And now you have all of this decision is trying to curate which voices should be on it or not. That doesn't help long term. I think is, this company needs to be shaken up. And if Elon wants to do that, let him do it. Somebody has to do it. It's just been miserable for investors. I mean, and speaking of turnarounds, though, when you think where Bitcoin and crypto started versus where it is now, I mean, you weren't always this bullish on crypto. What was the turning point for you? And what do you think is going to be the turning point for the next wave of Listen crypto up. investors? The turning point for me was change in policy by regulators. I'm a highly regulated individual because I have so many investments in traditional financial services companies. Now, Bitcoin is not a coin, it's software. Ethereum is software, Polygon is software. All of these are software development teams creating innovation in financial services, the largest market in the world. And to the extent that they can add value, transparency, speed, all of that, that's why it's such, has, has such potential and it hasn't gone away. Now, sure, the prices are volatile. And the reason the prices are volatile is that sovereign funds and pension plans for all the excitement about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies own this much of it, nothing. And they're not going to do that until there's policy in place. You want price stability, you want price appreciation, allow a sovereign run running a $200 billion mandate, a 1% position in Bitcoin. That's how you get there. But they're not going to do it until there's policy in place. And so I'm very pro policy on this. I'm very fortunate. I've been able to meet these senators, discuss their bills with them. I'm glad that they're, they're asking private citizens to come to the Hill and give their input. That's great. But again, we've got to accelerate this policy. And I think the best way to do it is pick one asset class. Let's go stable coins. 
The Toomey bill, the Haggerty bill, both propose and contemplate making this a policy de decision. They want transparency. They want to see what's backing up the stable coin, if it's US dollar and what other, ass what other assets. They want to audit it every 30 days. I'm fine with that. And they don't want any assets inside it longer duration than 12 months. That makes total sense to me. Now, why wouldn't we push one of those bills through and get this one asset class that allows people to buy stable coins, lend them out at four to 6% interest and at least protect their capital against inflation. You can't do that with savings in a bank account. You're basically being taxed at five and a half percent with 6% inflation. Nobody gets more than 50 basis points of interest anymore. So there's really good use case for this and we've got to get it going and policy is the way to do it. So I'm very encouraged about that. Now, obviously as an investor, this is now, I look at, I, I really believe that, that crypto will be the 12th sector of the S&P in 10 years. So I'm going to invest accordingly. It's now 20% of my operating company's portfolio across 32 different positions. I'm very comfortable with my diversity. And yes, there's volatility, but I'm essentially waiting for the government. I want to be the head of the curve. I want to own Bitcoin before the sovereign wealth funds buy it. And that's my bet. Now, everybody else has a different opinion. That's fine. But clearly, on the first day at Bitcoin 2022, when I made that keynote on the Wednesday, that was 1,500 institutional investors. That's the first time that's ever happened. Now, they own nothing, but they've come to learn, and that's the first step. And then you've got all the policy coming our way. This is all good as far as I'm concerned. If you did get policy, what type of exposure would you be willing to add on to your portfolio? I'm maxed out already. I'm 20%. So I'm, you know, my rules are basically the standard portfolio management rule. 20, you can never have more than 20% in any one sector and no more than 5% in any one stock. That's where I'm at right now with crypto. But this is a different time because how many times in your investment career do you get an opportunity to invest in a brand new sector of the S&P? Never. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Now, either you believe that or you don't, you have to make your decision. But once you say yes to crypto, you need diversification, you need policy, and you have to have a team that understands it. We don't have the compliance infrastructure yet, but that's coming. Look at the work that's going on at Circle to make it really easy for institutions to use USDC on a compliant basis. Look at FTX. That's a really investment grade compliant platform. Now I have to disclose, I'm a shareholder in FTX and a paid spokesperson, but I use the product. I don't endorse anything I don't use. So at the end of the day, you've got a lot of innovation coming here and you have to make a decision as to when you're going to engage. I've made mine. What Ooh. role do you anticipate that centralized finance will attempt to play in decentralized finance? Great question. Now, in my case, I'm betting both. And here's why I'm doing that. Go, let's go up to a, a jurisdiction that's far advanced to ours right now. That's Canada, where they license the very first crypto exchange with a dealer broker license. That is a centralized wallet. So Canadians are now allowed to download that app in every province. They can ACH cash from their bank account right into the exchange account. They can trade certain coins that the regulator has approved there on a compliant basis. They have tax reporting as well. But the key to that, it's a central wallet. But we found out, now I know this because a company I'm involved in and a shareholder in called Wonderfy acquired that license recently. And what we found immediately was the accounts, the 400,000 plus accounts also wanted a decentralized wallet for things like NFTs. So there's a use case for both. Once you acquire the customer, you don't want to lose them. So we immediately made it easy for those that wanted both to have both because you may want to keep certain assets in a decentralized wallet where you have direct ownership versus fractional ownership in a centralized wallet. But the point is, why not give users both? And that's what happened up in Canada. I think the same thing's going to happen here stateside. Same thing in United Arab Emirates, Brazil, Switzerland, Germany, England. There's so much innovation going on in different geographies with regulators at different stages of releasing policy on this that we have, fall we have fallen behind in the US. And that's why these bills are coming so fast and furious, in including the POTUS executive order. Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, drop some flames in the chat box. We got like three more minutes for this, man. Listen, if, if this is lit, if this is fire, if you're with me right now, go ahead and drop some flames. Let's go. Speaking of, perhaps we need a crypto-friendly president. Uh, yesterday, it was interesting, Mick Mulvaney, the former chief of staff of President Trump, said three people could beat Trump. He said Tim Scott, the senator from South Carolina. He said Ron DeSantis, the Florida governor. And then he added The Rock. 
as a third. Is someone from the business world capable of running and winning the presidency? presidency and who would you vote for? Well, there's precedent for what The Rock did. I mean, obviously, Trump was a very famous television reality star. I knew that because Shark Tank and, and Celebrity Apprentice started at the same time, and we used to run into each other in the forwards all the time. And he used that platform to build policy, which was very friendly at the end of the day. It may not have liked him as a president, and you, I hate to get into politics, but his policy was very pro-business. And that's really what I think a lot of people are looking for, some guidance on a more pro-business aspect. I will say one thing about the POTUS order, um, I, having read it, you'll notice deep buried in the back end of it is this comment about climate change. And that is a direct swipe at Bitcoin mining companies. One thing to note, and I brought this up at the keynote at Bitcoin 2022, you try and have to figure out in terms of investing in Bitcoin, one way to do it is if you're not allowed to own the coin itself, you can own the shares of public mining companies, which trade in proxy to Bitcoin pricing. And so companies like Marathon, HUD8, Hive, Riot, they're, they're all great companies that were mining Bitcoin and they were using carbon offsets to claim carbon neutrality. Well, if you read the POTUS order, and even worse to that, the memo from the SEC in the last few weeks, they're going to require audits of carbon credits. Now, everybody knows carbon credits are BS, if I may use that term and excuse my language, because there's no way to audit it. There's no ledger. You, can, you can't do an activity that creates carbon and say you bought an acre of the Amazon rainforest and say they offset each other. But the SEC order contemplates asking an auditor to sign that statement, just like a financial statement every quarter, taking on risks that they will not take on. So I, I mean, in the case of those companies that I had indexed for ownership in Bitcoin, I sold them all because they've got a world of hurt coming. The new model for Bitcoin mining that is emerging very quickly because of what the POTUS order said and because what the SEC is indicating in their memo is that it's hydropower, hydroelectricity and nuclear power that is the best way to mine Bitcoin. And those projects are springing up all over the place, all around the world. The biggest one right now is in Northern Norway. It's called the Norway Project. It's run by a private company called BitZero. The largest shareholder is the United Arab Emirates. So they're providing the equipment and the capital to build that out, all hydroelectricity. But watch projects come in upstate New York, Montana, North Dakota, Tennessee Valor. These are all areas where there is hydroelectricity available. And so this is the new model. So it's pretty tough for the origin, the early pioneers in Bitcoin mining who got stuck before anybody knew anything about this carbon audit stuff. They're the ones with the arrows in their back. And then these new companies over the next 24 months will go public, like the bid zeros, and institutional capital will go there. But this whole Bitcoin mining issue is going to be long-term good because about 85% of dams in America were built contemplating turbines that were never installed. Now investors like me are happy to install those turbines if we get the right to put a data center beside them. This is a really interesting innovation that will push us to more green electricity. Sheesh. Man, listen, listen, listen. Is y'all are y'all bullish with me or what, man? Like for real. Like I'm I'm like I'm secure with my investment. Like Kevin O'Lowry is 20% in. You know what I mean? He's 20% in. So I want to ask you a question. You do the math. What's 20% of 1 billion? Somebody let me know. Somebody type that in. I'm about to type it in too. What's 20%? I right, go to your calculator. I want you to give me 20% of 1 billion. Oh my God. How much money he got in crypto? Somebody let me know. And yes, this is a math problem at 10.24 a.m. Yep, surely is. Surely is. Welcome to class. Ah. And yo, shout out, Let me while, while we're waiting on the answer, shout out to uh, everybody that's on the call this morning, man. We got Aaron on the call. Hey, Aaron. We got uh, Miss Smith on the call. Hey, Miss Smith. We got Jake on the call. My mom on the call. Uh, over there looking beautiful with the short haircut. Kanira on the call. What up, sis? Marion on the call. What up, sis? Uh, turned on. Hey, hey, I ain't gonna lie. The whip, the women showed up, Jake. Hey, Tim, for real. <laughs> the women is here. You know, we gotta get some more fellas on here, man. We gotta, we gotta let them know. All right. So, 
the the amount that two hundred listen two one billion dollars right one billion dollars he's a billionaire twenty percent of that is two hundred million two hundred million if if listen if a if a billionaire is okay with putting two hundred million there two hundred two hundred million in uh, let me tell you something. You gotta follow what they do. If you if you want to turn if you want to turn your pennies into dollars because they turning their dollars into uh, extras, <laughs> you know what I mean? More, more dollars, right? So if you try to turn your pennies to dollars. You gotta do what the you gotta do what the rich people are doing. You gotta do what the banks are doing. Kevin O'Leary is not he's not a bank. He's an investor. He's a business owner. So he don't he 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 may be attached to the banks, but he's not the bank. So he said, listen, I'm putting my 200 million in before the hedge funds, before the bank, because they're not going to do it until regulation. Anybody that's, all, well, not anybody, but a lot of people that don't connect to these types of calls, no matter a community, a lot of people don't have a community, they're going to invest in when it's a part of the S&P 500, when these companies, because what is the S&P 500? Well, maybe you don't know what that is. So let me show you what the S&P 500 is, because I mean, it is basic information. We we gotta we gotta we gotta go there, right? So, what is the S and P five hundred? What is the S and P five hundred? Mind you, I trade the S and P five hundred, right? In the foreign exchange market, you can trade that. So, the S and P five hundred, it is uh it is um, it's a stock market index, right? tracking the performance of 500 large companies listed on the stock exchange in the United States. So it's the 500 of the largest companies, right? 500 of the largest companies. So what they're saying is the, there's, a, there's a certain sector of this, right? And um, the sector of this, the sector of this, one second, y'all. All right, I'm back. So the sector of this, this part of the S&P 500 is called FinTech, all right? It's called FinTech, FinTech, financial technology companies, right? A lot of them are in India, a lot of them are in Asia, a, couple, a lot of them are on the West Coast, uh, Atlanta starting to be, uh, you know, uh, 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 what else, Florida, um, um, Texas, right? So FinTech companies, right? financial techno technology companies. So you want to start investing into crypto because as it becomes legal in the US, it will legally be able to be listed. So I'm going to be real with you. These companies are listed on here based on what? Market cap. These companies are listed on the S&P 500 based on market cap. Bitcoin's market cap today. Let's go look at it. Bitcoin, the crypto market cap. The industry of crypto is $1.8 trillion, all right? Now, I'm going to show you guys something. If I go here, all right, yeah, I'm a real nerd, all right? So it's all good. But I'm about to show y'all something. Boom, global charts, okay? So total cryptocurrency market cap is at $1.8 trillion, right? The total crypto market cap without Bitcoin right now is at 1.09 trillion. So I told you that the total is at what? 1.8 trillion. If you take, that means that you got to take 800 million off of that for the Bitcoin market cap. Hold up. So you mean to tell me that Bitcoin makes up majority, right? Of the market cap. So let's go look at the ranking. Bitcoin domination. 753 billion dollars almost 1 trillion almost 1 trillion when crypto when 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 bitcoin makes it to 1 trillion dollars i want to compare it we're going to compare and we're going to contrast it to 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 some other um to some other cryptos let me see if they actually have them here let me see if i know how to i used to know how to do this it's been a minute since i did this hold on might be, is it categories? Nope, it's not categories. Spotlights? No, nah, it's not spotlights. Hold up. Nope, uh, let's see here. 
historical snapshots. Uh, okay, let's, let's, let's go look at this. April 28th of 2013. So these are historical snapshots that coin market cap have taken of each market, right? Since the beginning of 2003, April 2013. We're in April of 2000 and what? 22. Let's go look at this. At the time, Bitcoin was only at how much money? $1 billion, $1.4 billion. It was $134 a coin. I just showed you guys that Bitcoin is almost at a trillion dollars. That's happened in less than 10 years. Hold up. There's more. Here we go. Legal tender countries. Hold up. There's more. There's more. Hold up. I got to find this. This is good stuff. Here we go. Fiat and company ranks. So let's go to the top, the top companies. Apple. Apple's coming in at a $2 trillion market cap. Apple is number one. <laughs> Apple is a giant. Apple is up there. Then we go down. You got Microsoft coming in at two trillion. You got Google coming in at 1.5 trillion. Bitcoin was over, a, um, um, I'm gonna be real with y'all. Bitcoin already hit a trillion dollar market cap. It just sold off. A lot of people sold off. So we lost market capitalization, right? The money in the market. So Bitcoin fell to number eight. When I checked this, when we were on our hike, when Bitcoin was headed to 70,000, it was number three, number four. It's at number eight now. Tesla, Amazon, these are the top. So listen, all these companies are part of the S&P 500. Why is Bitcoin not listed on the S&P 500? Oh, because there's no regulation for the stock market yet. Oh, that's why the banks ain't put the, oh, hold on. Are y'all with me? Y'all with me right now? Right? Then, then, then we keep going. And then Ethereum is at number 22. I told y'all the S&P 500 is top 500 companies. Ethereum's coming in at number 22. I guarantee you I can keep going and we'll continue to find cryptocurrencies, the top 10 cryptocurrencies throughout this. So yes, cryptocurrency is coming to take over FinTech. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I'm hearing that from Kevin O'Leary. It really put it in perspective for me. It really made me understand that, yo, we're in the right place at the right time. Drop a 777 if you understand and you believe that you're at the right place at the right time. Let me know. Let me know. Is you at the right place at the right time, right? Sheesh. And time stands for things I must experience. I'm happy you're here to experience this with me right now. Because we about to, I'm about to take y'all through the real rabbit hole. Y'all don't even hit the rabbit hole yet. Like that was surface level. Like we ain't even hit the rabbit hole yet. Let me, let me show y'all something. So Kevin O'Leary started talking and what I do is I break down videos. It take me, it took, it's a 13 minute video. It took me about three hours to get through that one video because I kept stopping and looking things up. This is like, when you really want to be the great, like I'll be the greatest at this. Like when you really want to be like Muhammad Ali, like I want to be the greatest at crypto. Like it, when they know, they was gonna like, Vincent, like this is it. Like th this is it. I'm, I'm leading the way, I'm paving the way. That's how I see it. And yo, this is the type of deep diving you got to do. Like to secure, because like I went and bought more crypto after I, I saw this. I was like, yo, put another like 300. I couldn't even afford. I wasn't even supposed to put 300 in it. I did it anyway. I don't care. I'm going to go make some more cash. I'm going to go figure it out. I'm going to go hustle. I'm going to go get, I'm going to grind. I'm going to go start a business. I'm going to go do something to make sure I can keep fueling this. Right? One of the first attempts at comprehensive crypto bill. Now, this is in this is in December of 2021. So they already last year, they already was on Capitol Hill talking about these. So this lady named Cynthia Loomis, she's a Bitcoin evangelist. This woman, she owns five Bitcoin right now. She's on Capitol Hill. She created her own bill, right? She's creating her own bill for cryptocurrency. She's one of the only two senators invested in cryptocurrencies. Loomis is also one of the members of the Senate Banking Committee, which oversees banks 
and coinage and has questioned crypto industry experts on digital assets. Look, so that's the first bill that's on Capitol here right now. That, that, that happened less than eight months ago. Here we go. Let's go to the next one. Less than six months ago. Shoot, less than five months ago. <laughs> Watch this. U.S. lawmaker introduced bill that would require stable coin issuers to obtain bank charts, uh, charters. Um, if you don't know what stable coins is, if you don't understand tokens, coins, I recommend that you go ahead and jump into my, my private mentorship. Uh, you know, some people on here, maybe you were on here because you got the email and all you did was bought the book, right? And you're ready to take the book to the next level. Let me be your guy, right? I have, I have a few slots left for my private yearly mentorship. Uh, they really are going fast. Like somebody's getting signed up every day. I can't, I can't even make this up. If you're inside my Discord, you see someone come in damn near every day, right? So it's amazing. It's an amazing thing that we're really impacting and helping a lot of people. Um, and on top of this, right? So these are the representatives, right? So what I recommend that you do is if you really want to become a, a DeFi expert, is that when you when you go through these articles, right? Um, and we got less than we got about 20 minutes, uh, almost 20 minutes left. So again, guys, these calls are about an hour. I'm not going over. Um, but when you see these representatives, go to Twitter and follow them. <laughs> like go to Twitter and follow. Them. Twitter is the world. These people will let you know. They'll let you know what coin is next. They'll let you know what technology is next. These are the people that's voting on it. So I go, I'm that, I'm that surgical. I'm that surgical. I'm following people on Twitter. Like my Twitter is nothing but Republicans. Uh, I don't follow no Democrats. I follow, I, I don't even follow Obama. I follow the Republicans because they get into the bag when it comes to cryptocurrency. I'm not following the Democrats. I mean, like it's important to know what the Democrats, but they not, they, they, Biden is holding the bag up. He, he's holding the bag. He collecting the bag too. I think he invested into it. Right. So this is this is a stable coin bill. It's called the it's called the Stable Act, Stable Coin Tethering and Bank Licensing Enforcement Act. Everything dealing with banks, guys, licensing. This stuff is happening. Our world is about to change. ISO 222. Y'all hear me talking about it all the time. Uh, it's coming. It's already here. Look at this. U.S. stable stable coin bill presented. What's the stable coin that the U.S. is going to use? USDC, USD coin. It's connected. USDC, I'm going to show y'all something. How many people ever heard of Circle? Drop a, drop a two if you've ever heard of the company Circle. Drop a two if you've ever heard of Circle. Perfect. Tardon heard of Circle. Perfect, right? So... Here it is, circle.com. Now, Circle's an old company. Um, I forget what company they used to be. They were a different company. I forget what company they transitioned into. But this new company, Circle, they're a payments and treasury inf infrastructure for the internet. We help businesses accept payments and send payouts globally in one unified platform, move digital money leveraging traditional payment rails and do business in a more global, scalable and efficient way through blockchain infrastructure. Circle seamlessly connects these worlds. USD coin, build with dollar digital currency. Build with the dollar digital currency. We're talking about CBDC, central bank digital currencies. This is what's happening. USDC is going to be that. They're already partnered with MasterCard, Visa, and Play. They already got multiple partnerships, Avalanche, Flow, Stellar, Algorand, Ethereum, Tron. They're connected to all these Hedera Hashgraph. They're connected to all of these uh, 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 blockchains so that you can transfer your USDC into this blockchain, your USDC into this blockchain, your USDC into this blockchain. It's a bridge. There are certain companies like Harmony. That's why we tell you to invest into one, O-N-E, Harmony. You can get it on crypto.com. Go get it. What is Harmony? 
Harmony is a bridge. It, it helps. It helps stable coins. It helps any cryptocurrency connect from one bridge to another bridge. You don't need to know a lot about it. Just understand that if you want to get from uh, if you want to get from San Francisco to the other side, you got to cross the Golden Gate Bridge. If you want to get from San Diego to Coronado, you got to cross the Coronado Bridge. If you want to get from one side of London to the other side of London, you got to cross the London Bridge. If you want to get from this side of the blockchain to the other side of the blockchain, you got to cross the, the Ethereum bridge, the Hedera bridge, the Avalanche bridge, the Tron bridge. It's technology. It's not something we're going to use. These companies not even created for us. They're created for the elite. So invest into them. Right? I don't want to go too crazy, man, because like I'm I'm deep in here, right? I'm deep in these streets. Deep in these streets, man. So the U.S. stablecoin bill arrives in Cong Congress, right? This happened. What's the date on this article? The date on this article is, uh, let's see. They be having too much stuff on here, man. Let's see. I don't know what the date of this article was, but it came out. All right. I'm pretty sure within the last five months, <laughs> this has come out. Okay. So that's, that's, that's another bill. Here's another one. Biden's executive order on crypto met with relief from key industry players. The order is largely perceived as a step in the right direction that could offer the industry much needed regulatory clarity. Right? Everything's about regulatory clarity. They want crypto. They want blockchain. The banks need that technology to push the one world currency, to push the, 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 the new world order. This is the technology that involves it. And the thing is, yeah, all right. I, I mean, I grew up in the things I heard about, you know, in, in, in being in church, you know, the mark of the beast and all that. Look, I re listen, the mark of the beast is going to happen. I just rather be on the right side of the beast. I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I don't want to. I don't, I, I feel like the beast is poverty or richness. I believe the mark of the beast is no more middle class. I believe it's poverty or because you invested into the technology or you did it. That's how I see the mark of the beast right now. Yeah, I know it's more biblical, but hey, that's how I see it. And, and, and so that's what's pushing me. I'm going to be on the right side of the beast, still with God and on the right side of the beast. Because I'm going to be rich. Right? So... Um, let me sip some coffee, man. Man, let's go. So those are some bills for y'all, man. That was some Kevin O'Leary, uh, you know, bullish content. Um, you know, I had, a, I had some, you know, I had a coin, but meet me Thursday. Um, you know, I, I'm gonna do more research on this, but, uh, there's some new XRP uh, partnership. You know what? I'm going to give it to y'all now. I don't even care. I just give it all away. It's all good. Y'all can have it right now. Here. So first off, y'all see I stay on coin market cap. This is, you know what I mean? This is, this, this is like, this never leaves my computer. So XRP. XRP is at 66 cent. This thing is down. Perfect. I'm, I'm happy. I, I hope it hit 20 cent. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I hope it crash. Like, I hope it crash. I'm gonna just buy it up. I'm, I'm, I'm confident. I'm gonna buy it up. I don't care. XRPL. All right, let me show y'all something. Um, Let's see. This ain't even it. I don't want to go to XRPL. I'm gonna go to Ripple. So XRP is the technology. Ripple is the company. Ripple is the company has been around. Um, I, I want to show you, I'm going to show y'all something. Let me, let me, let me take y'all through the rabbit hole a little more. Let me, let me get y'all right. 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 We almost done, y'all. It's about to be amazing. It's an amazing day, man. Let me show y'all. Warning, the following content is controversial.
Your clothes have arrived from the dry cleaners. Oh, great. What about that dirty, sweaty urine smell? Uh, they added it, sir, just as you asked. <laughs> Now that I'm rich, you know, these flies just ain't flies anymore. They're dependents. Except <laughs> that one. Say, Jenkins, you get my wheels out the shop. Yes, sir. <laughs> Very good. All right, they got my cart phone in here. I better get my broker on the line. to see a Mr. Anton Jackson. This way, please. Hey, listen, bitch. I said I want a hundred shares of Ripple. I want a hundred shares of Ripple. <laughs> yeah, I know it's going down, but believe me, I know my Ripple will be coming up real soon. He sound like me. <laughs> hey, he sound like me. I know it's going down, but I, listen, <laughs> I know my Ripple it's gonna be coming up real soon. You feel me? So let's go, let's go, let's go jump in the ripple. See, see, he knew something. He knew something back in the 90s. See, that was in the night, that was 1990. That was like night. I don't know. My mom, uh, you know, Aaron, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, no, not Aaron. Aaron, Aaron with Miss Allison, you know, uh, let me see, uh, Turdon, maybe you know, uh, Wendy, some, somebody. I don't know if y'all remember that episode, but that look. That was back. That was back in the nineties. He said something about the stocks or Ripple, and I don't know if you guys know, but you can go get Ripple on pre-IPO right now. Uh, you gotta at least get. Uh, it's a lot of shit. You gotta get like ten thousand shares, so it's gonna run you. It's gonna run you a pretty penny, but you can go invest into Ripple. You kidding me? So pre-IPO sale. So fast forward, you know. So let's, 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 since we on Ripple, since we on Ripple, let me, let me take y'all through the Ripple rabbit. It ain't gonna take long. Let me take y'all through the Ripple rabbit hole real quick. Okay. Now let's speed up to 2017. Uh, houses and get weird told if it's not a cash offer. Right? So that was in the nineties. Let's speed up to 2017. We're drawing out. This better be good. All right. We're back with a very mysterious Ashton Kush. Interesting tech company called Ripple that we're going to invest in, right? Okay, what is Ripple? So Ripple is basically a platform to allow people to transfer money from bank account to bank account, person to person, really securely, really simply, really quickly. Uh -huh. Okay. So we found this company, we thought it was really, really interesting. And it runs on this stuff called XRP, which is a cryptocurrency, but basically, it's just a way to get value from here to there. Okay. So we're meeting with these folks and they're explaining to us the, the the people that run it this guy chris larson and the guy named brad garlinghouse and they run it and they're talking about the ethic of this company and this platform and how they actually really care about being an ethical company and and giving po a portion of this platform away to people that are doing good in the world mm -hmm. so it was around the exact same time that i ran into you on the beach and you told me about this amazing birthday gift that you got from Portia. Uh, and that, and you explained to me that if you weren't doing this, that what you would be working on is that project, right? Yeah, I would be saving the gorillas, yes. You would be saving the gorillas, and everybody knows what I was saying. So, but you never ask anyone for anything ever. And you said, at some point, I'm going to need some help with this. And I said, uh, you're asking me for help. You never ask anyone for help, ever. And at the same time, you called him. It was on your birthday. You called me on your birthday. I was like, wow, she's calling me on her birthday. Is everything OK? And you wanted to share with me this incredible story, uh, the gift of a lifetime that Portia gave you. And I promised you on that call that I'd be there to help you. And we are brothers, and we're here to help you. And so we talked to Chris and Brad, and we said, there's this amazing human being. And all they ever do is think about other people they can give to, whether it's in New Orleans, whether it's in Montecito, whether it's the people that come here, the people out there, you're always thinking about everyone else. And we wanted to show you that people are thinking about you. So on behalf of Ripple, we'd like to give you $4 million. <laughs> Now, 
Now, usually people come out with the big giant check and do the like big giant check thing, but we can actually transfer it into Rwandan francs right now, right here. And all we have to do is push this button and it's in your account. Do you want to push it? You want me to push I it? I would like to push it. <laughs> I'd like to push it real good. <laughs> so a lot of people laugh. <laughs> A lot of people laugh, but I want you to pay attention to something like it just hit me. It, it, I know it didn't hit you because it just hit me. And I've been studying. Listen, look right behind them. It says, don't look at the, the money. Look at the recipient. It says the Ellen DeGeneres Wildlife Fund. What type of, what type of, what type of recipient is that? Does anybody know? Can someone drop that in the chat box? What type of, what type of recipient would that be? What type of business? That's a, that. That's a what? A nonprofit, a not for profit, right? And so, with it being a nonprofit, one of the workarounds that I understand when I was on a call with a tax expert and they were talking to me about crypto taxes and the way to get it was through donating your crypto. You ain't got to pay taxes if you donate your crypto to a what? A nonprofit. So, you know, success leaves clues. So that's just something I saw right there. I wanted to run that by y'all real quick, all right? But another thing is they gave her this $4 million back in 2017. If we, if we go, if we pull up the XRP chart and we go to 2017, 2017, XRP in 2017 was under a penny. In January 31st, it was under, oh my God. Oh. Damn. <laughs> Dang. Y'all don't even understand. Ellen DeGeneres hit, she's a, yo, she's, she might be one of the richest people on, in the world. Ellen DeGeneres might be one of the wealthiest people. Damn. I mean, how many gorillas can you help? You can help a lot of gorillas. Wow. So let's let's finish this up, man. I'm about to be in tears. Let's finish this up. All right. <laughs> y'all crazy, man. I know y'all laughing at me. Oh, y'all laughing at me. It's all good. So, where where is it? Dang, can I not find it? Give me a second, y'all. Man, we here. We here, Mr. Don. Listen, see our customers. Oh, my God. This is on Ripple website. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are y'all kidding me? Oh, they won't even let you see past it. Hold on. Yo, did y'all see how quick that was? You only could see it like boom, and then they then they they close it out. You can't even sit. Hold on, wait, maybe. Yep. So I can't even. So what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this real quick. Watch this. They think, they think, they think I'm a fool. I'm getting the, I'm getting this screenshot. Watch this. This is how deep in the rabbit hole you gotta be. Oh, caught him. So now let's pull that up. You gotta be quick on your toes. Let's pull that up. Boom, desktop. Bang. If y'all can see my screen right now, drop a uh, drop a five. If you can see my screen, drop a five. Oh, I'm talking about the companies I screenshot it. Okay, perfect, perfect. So let's look at the, and these, and they said 55 companies. I mean, this, this ain't 55 plus companies, you know, like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Hold on, so, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So this, they said 55 plus companies. It's only 30 on here. So let's see what they showed us. SBI Remit, huge. Bank of America, huge. American Express, huge. Tranglo, huge. All these companies. Saab. That's a Saudi Arabian, I think Saudi Arabian bank, huge. Most of these are banks. Uh, look, Al-Rahi Bank, 
Saudi Arabian bank. Here's another Saudi Arabian bank, Egyptian bank, excuse me, bank of National Bank of Egypt, right? National Bank of Egypt. What? BKK Forex, come on, man. So, yeah. So one last thing before we get out of here, I'm gonna let y'all go. One last thing. What I like to go is I go over here to resources and I go to press release. And I need y'all to see something. April 14th, this happened. Cross chain bridge, all bridge brings DeFi to the XRP ledger. Cross, listen, all bridge. So then I said, hmm, what's all bridge? Boom. All bridge, it's a cross chain bridge. We talked about bridges before, fast, affordable and secure, right? 5.9 billion done in total bridge money. 50 cent bridge fee, cheap. When the last time you spent 50 cent trying to send a billion dollars? One to five minutes, why? Because they're utilizing, because now they're able to utilize the XRP ledger. Right. And these are the other places. Remember, we talked about it. We talked about Harmony. Right. We talked about Harmony. There go Harmony. Solana, Ethereum. Right. Avalanche. Right. Here they go. Our partners. Here are their partners. You want to know what cryptos they invest into? Invest into ones that 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 are that are on some sites like this. They're, they're showing you the future. These are the people that they're partnering with. Sologenic is partnered with XRP. There's XRP. Harmony, I told you to invest into that. That's the bridge. I've been buying Harmony since it was 0 0.007. Yes, sir. Bullish on Harmony right now. Right? So then I said, okay, well, is does all bridge have a cryptocurrency? I mean, like, is there some way I can invest into all bridge since it's a bridge? So I came over here to coin market cap and I said, okay, all, let's look for all bridge. Oh, 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 hold up. There it is. Boom. $2 and 10 cent It's number 3000. So it's a sleeping giant. It's a sleeping giant. It's market cap. Hold on. Is, is Tim still here? Because, hey, my boy Tim be on it. Hey, Tim, hit me up, bro. You know, we're about to dive into this, bro. I know Tim on it. Look at this. Look at this. All right? All bridge. Go to the all-time. Let's look and see. Yo, all-time high is $10. Are you kidding me? All-time low is $1.50, cent, 56 cents, somewhere around there, right? It's at $2.11. So going from $2 to $10, is that a good jug or what? Is that a good is that a good jug or what? All bridge. All bridge. Where can you get it from? Let's look. Let's look. The markets that it's on. You can get it on Uniswap, Pancake Swap, Spirit Swap. So you got to know how to use the swaps. So if you need help with the swaps, that's why you got to get up with me. You gotta get, you gotta sit down with me. Let me do a one-on-one -on -one training. I can show you how to transfer your money over safely in the pancake swap, switch these over to another wallet. I can teach you how to do those things, right? So if you need help with getting all bridge, you know, I'm gonna go get me some. If you need help with grabbing some all bridge, uh, you know, you got, if you got my number, text me. Uh, we can set up a strategy session. We can set up some time. Uh, you know, if you're already a part of my private mentorship group, just tap in with me. Um, and, and, you know, I can, I can help you. But uh, yeah, we'll get some office time. But I love each and every single one of you. We ended this thing right at 10:59. Um, what I want to do right.